and welcome to Stanford Scholar. In this talk, we will discuss the research paper, Haptic Wave, a cross-modal interface for visually impaired audio producers by Atal Tanaka and Adam Parkinson. Before we explain the haptic wave, we need to know, what is haptic interaction? Haptic is any form of interaction which involves touch. So what is the problem that this paper is trying to address? Any sound that we hear can be visualized graphically like this. How do we interpret this sound wave? Sound receiving sensors identify certain characteristics of the sound, which are then converted to a graphical representation based on the standard characteristics of graphical waveforms. A sighted user can understand a graphical waveform of a sound by looking at it and identifying its characteristics based on standard characteristics of graphical waveforms. Whereas a visually impaired user can neither look at the graphical waveform, nor are there any standard characteristics of graphical waveforms defined for visually impaired users. Also, current off-the-shelf accessibility tools for visually impaired users, like on-screen readers and keyboard shortcuts, are unintuitive to use. So, the aim here is to allow visually impaired audio editors to conveniently produce and edit audio content. So why is this problem important? Search results on Google and the scheme at Royal College of Music show that visual impairment has not kept people away from producing music. For them to compete at the same level with sighted users, things need to be made easier for them. Why is this problem hard to solve? First, unlike sighted users, visually impaired users are limited to a single mode of interaction. Thus, cross-modal mapping of audio is required. Second, it takes time to adapt to a new technical solution which is hard to build given the user's unique needs. So now the question is, is cross-modal mapping for visual waveforms possible? Or if the visual waveform displays allow sighted users to see the sound, can we build an alternative interface for visually impaired users to feel the sound? Now, how did the authors go about the whole problem? The idea is to develop the solution that is haptic wave, which renders audio into kinesthetic information or force feedback. The authors chose a user-centered design approach as the cross-modal mapping required closely working with the intended end users. Several insights about users, methodology of the process, and cross-modal representations were gained during this. The development of the haptic wave involved three main stages, design, development, and deployment. A series of participatory activities were designed for the visually impaired. Prototyping was done at each stage since feedback from users integrated with research knowledge allowed authors to incrementally confront and solve issues. The methodology employed consists of three workshops and a series of extended studio trials. The goal of the first scoping workshop was to identify existing methods of working and problems with it. Also, ideas for new solutions were brainstormed. It was identified that participants felt that the current solutions were ill-suited especially for working with multiple tracks. And they demonstrated enthusiasm towards haptic interactions, but in 2D rather than 3D. With inputs from the scoping workshop, a low-fidelity prototype was created from a dismantled scanner. The test procedure included loading audio files and asking participants to scrub through to feel the amplitude of the waveform. Participants were enthusiastic about a new device, but pointed out that it was not ergonomically suitable to use. A fully functional prototype made of wood was created based on feedback from the second workshop. Evaluation of the prototype took place in two phases, one, a lab-based workshop, and two, studio trials. In the studio trials, participants used the device in their respective studios. Evaluation of the experiments were made by gauging users' reactions in real-world usage scenarios and from diary entries made in the studio trials. So, what were the overall findings from the experiments? The findings were positive, mentioning how it increases the speed and accuracy of editing tasks and how users were able to form a mental image of their tasks. At the same time, the researchers felt that visually impaired users can be treated as experts in non-visual interfaces. A survey of sighted musicians observed screens as distractions opened up the possibility of using haptic devices even for sighted users. 
Let's see if we got answers to the research question we set out to answer. So yes, the cross-modal mapping of audio is possible. The researchers were successful in building an accessible interface for converting audio data as kinesthetic information for audio editing and visualization. Now, what are the real-world applications of the haptic wave? Developed as a prototype, it was used alongside equipment in a professional studio and thus has the potential for commercial production. It can also be used for eyes-free interface for sighted users. Further, it can be used to enhance multimodal tactile feedback and for better use of input devices. In conclusion, to summarize, first, the authors identified problems with audio editing for visually impaired users, which they set out to solve by cross-modal mapping of audio. Second, a user-centered design process was followed where feedback from end users helped design and develop the product. Third, the device was received enthusiastically and it was observed to speed up tasks and improve accuracy.